E-W-S. The Overnight Underground News Podcast. Here's today's headlines. The Great Statue War of 2020 has begun. Faulty Towers falls. Anything else? I mean, would you like the hotel moved a bit to the left? Or... <laughs> Starbucks, not woke, woke. Band-Aids, definitely woke. Lawlessness in Seattle and three tales of the popo. These stories and more on today's Overnight Underground News. I'm John Ford. Get ready for the first weekend of the Great Statue War. In London, they've completely encased the statue of Winston Churchill. It looks like a monolith. All this so protesters can't deface and topple the statue of a man that just a few scant years ago was voted England's greatest Britain. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. You've got a situation in which the the statue of, of Winston Churchill, who is a national hero, has had to be boarded up uh, for fear of violent attack. And that, to me, is both absurd and, and wrong. You, sh- you should not have a situation in which people who are, are protesting on, for, on, one, on one basis are, are violently attacking the police or public property. And I'm afraid what's happened with these, these demonstrations is that a tiny minority, or actually a growing minority, unfortunately, have hijacked them. And uh, they are using them as a pretext to uh, attack the police, to, uh, to cause violence, and to cause damage to, to public property. Christopher Columbus, Cecil Rhodes, Robert the Bruce in Scotland, and Belgium's King Leopold have all been the targets of angry mobs of woke illiberals. So what's the end game? Now, English protesters are calling for the destruction of the Great Pyramids of Giza in Egypt. That is so stupid. And in the U.S., CNN talking head Angela Rye has called for statues of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson to be torn down. George Washington was a slave owner, and we need to call slave owners out for what they are. Whether we think they were protecting American freedom or not, he wasn't protecting my freedom. I wasn't someone who my ancestors weren't deemed human beings to him. And so to me, I don't care if it's a George Washington statue or a Thomas Jefferson statue, or a Robert E. Lee statue. They all need to come down. Like we didn't see that one coming. Yep. Meanwhile, across the pond, Nigel Farage resigned from his radio show with, quote, immediate effect on Thursday. This comes following Farage's comparison of the statue demolishers to the Taliban, referring to the destruction of the 2,000-year-old Buddhas of Bamiyan by the Taliban in 2001. Well, if the shoe fits... Just how absurd can this all get? Well, an episode of the classic TV comedy Faulty Towers has been removed from UK TV. So far, John Cleese, the Monty Python star who played Basil on the series, hasn't commented on the move. Not to be outdone, here in the States, Nick Jr. cartoon Paw Patrol is being targeted by activists. It seems the positive slant of the police dogs portrayed on the cartoon are just more than the offended woke mob can deal with. Just as news came in from burnt coffee giant Starbucks that they'll be closing some 400 stores in North America, the Seattle Brown Liquid proprietor released a statement that workers in its stores will not be allowed to wear pro-Black Lives Matter attire. We need to talk about your flair. Really? I have 15 pieces on. Although Starbucks has gotten on the corporate bandwagon of virtue signaling their support for BLM, they just don't want employees showing their political colors on the job. All this comes from that bastard, uh, bastion of journalistic integrity, BuzzFeed, who has posted an internal Starbucks memo online. The memo states that BLM flair does not conform to Starbucks dress code policy, banning pins and representing, quote, political, religious, or personal issues. All I can say is... Good luck, gentlemen. I'm sure the mob is coming for you next, despite your corporate virtue signaling. (laughs) Okay, forget everything I just said. Starbucks just caved. According to CNN, Starbucks is reversing the position prohibiting employees from wearing paraphernalia, such as T-shirts or pens supporting Black Lives Matter. What if this new policy includes all political paraphernalia? Expect someone to get fired for wearing a Trump hat or a Goldwater pen and lawsuits to commence forthwith. Methinks Starbucks just opened their own bag of whoop-ass. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Let's see. What else we got here? Band-Aids are becoming more inclusive. According to an article on KVU TV, Band-Aids is expanding products for all skin tones. The company is set to launch bandages in light, medium, and deep shades of brown and black skin tones. That should fix just about everything. Probably just needs a Band-Aid. 
we got a couple three police stories for you here. In the continuing saga of lawlessness in Seattle, the police chief has now gone on record that city officials in the People's Republic of Seattle left the popo out to dangle in the wind during the recent riots and protests. I want to update you all on the situation at the East Precinct. The decision to board up the precinct, our precinct, our home, the first precinct I worked in, was something I have been holding off. You should know, leaving the precinct was not my decision. You fought for days to protect it. I asked you to stand on that line, day in and day out, to be pelted with projectiles, to be screamed at, threatened, and in some cases hurt. Then to have a change of course nearly two weeks in, it seems like an insult to you and our community. Ultimately, the city had other plans for the building and relented to severe public pressure. Well, even though she's black, she isn't towing the woke Seattle intersectionalist agenda, so she can probably kiss her job goodbye. As a side note, Trump continued his Twitter war of words with the Seattle and Washington state political machine, tweeting Friday morning, quote, Seattle mayor says about the anarchists taking over a city, it's a summer of love. I don't know. We could have the summer of love. That's Seattle Mayor Dingbat Durkin. Trump continues, these liberal Dems don't have a clue. The terrorists burn and pillage our cities, and they think it's just wonderful. Even the deaf must end this Seattle takeover now. I wonder what he's really thinking. Nuclear weapons may be our only viable option. The Berklee College of Music is apologizing I apologize. for allowing the Boston police to use their bathroom facilities to relieve themselves during the recent unrest in the city. According to Fox News, the school apologized I apologize. for, quote, perpetuating feelings of oppression, silencing, and marginalization after it let Boston police use its bathrooms. Nothing says perpetuating feelings of oppression, silencing, and marginalization like taking a leak. You know, you just can't make this shit up. <laughs> Meanwhile, in San Francisco, the police have announced that, in accordance with the current political climate of calls for defunding the popo and to limit unnecessary confrontation between the police department and the community, because God knows, you don't want the community and the police talking to each other, the San Francisco Boys in Blue... That's a gay club, you moron! ...will no longer respond to non-criminal calls. The website Watch Our City reports that Mayor London Breed... Is that a noun or an adjective? ...also noted that the city will ban the use of military-grade weapons, whatever that is, and divert funding to the African-American community. Good luck. We're all counting on you. Now this is one fucked up story. A woman in Denver was shot and killed because she was talking to her dog, trying to convince the pooch to do its duty. According to the Denver Post, 21-year-old Isabella Thallus was walking her dog with a friend near Coors Field when a verbal altercation ensued with someone in an apartment over her telling her dog to hurry up and poop. Poop in the bedpan. The man in the apartment, allegedly 36-year-old Michael Close, then opened fire on the couple shooting Thallus dead. Police later nabbed the reputed shooter driving on a nearby highway. A rifle and a handgun were found in his car. A GoFundMe page has been set up for the woman's family to cover funeral expenses. You can find that link on today's Overnight Underground News. N-E-W-S A mostly correct and occasionally incomplete transcript and links to reference sources and articles of this Overnight Underground can be found at OvernightUnderground.com.